One of the things I have reiterated several times in this podcast is that you should be focusing a ton of your effort on getting just a few things done. Big projects and major initiatives are actually what help you move the needle in any business. Yes, the minutia needs to be done, but not by you. However, it's not just that big projects need to be completed. They need to be completed quickly. The faster you can take a project from concept to completion, the faster your success will compound on itself, similar to the way that compounding interest works. So the question is, how do you get big and important and sometimes daunting tasks accomplished as quickly as possible? How can you get things done in a way that those around you go, I cannot believe you are operating at this level all the time? Today, we're going to talk about five tips for operating with maximum efficiency. Number one, set a timeline and push for it. Don't give up. This is the single most important rule when it comes to getting things done quickly. This alone will allow you to operate at superhuman speeds. So set a timeline and then reverse engineer each step that would need to be completed and set a timeline for each of those steps as well. You should basically break it down into multiple steps each week. So for example, if you need to create your legal documents for a deal that you're doing, you need to start with the date that you're projected to end on. From there, reverse engineer the steps that will need to be completed so that by the time the date comes, you are done with all that by the deadline. So you need to start with an initial call with your attorney. So set a date for that. After that call, there's going to be a rough draft of the operating agreement sent to you. Then you'll need to be able to review that and then send back those questions or comments to your attorney so that you can receive a second draft, at which point you'll review that, send it back to your attorney, at which point you'll receive a final draft or a third draft. And each of these steps is going to take days. So you have to factor each of those steps in. And by the way, this is just for getting the legal documents done. There's a million other things that need to be handled, some of which may be involving other people, and it can get very complicated. So the way that we do this is we use a project management tool called Airtable, which the free version is actually quite robust. So if you're interested, check it out. But the key here is starting with the end date and then reverse engineering the steps that you'll have to take to work towards finalizing by that end date. Number two, get some witnesses. As soon as you have a solid idea of the timeline, let people know about it. Tell your friends and family, say, look, we are launching this offering by this date. Just saying it out loud, saying it to someone creates some accountability. In Raising Capital for Real Estate, Before I even go into how to build a brand or build a website or anything like that, I ask the readers to block out time to send out initial emails to some individuals to say, hey, I'm working in the commercial real estate sector, if you didn't know, and I'll likely have a deal for you in the next three months. And part of the reason for this is that it creates some accountability and some momentum so that people are actually motivated to get through it. This alone is a very powerful tool, especially if those people then later follow up in three months and say, look, hey, where's the deal? You're like, oh no, I'm still working on it. Like knowing that that may happen really increases the likelihood that you'll get it done because you're getting the witnesses, you're increasing that accountability. Number three, raise the stakes and goal stack. Now this one might be a little bit controversial and it may not be for everyone, but here's the thing. Just doing something usually isn't enough for most people to be motivated. A lot of the reason that people fail to accomplish the big things that they set out to accomplish is that they actually aren't that big in their own minds. This is because they haven't raised the stakes high enough to actually make it worth their emotional interest. If you're just working on a project because you think it's cool or even if it may make you some money, is that really enough for you to jump out of bed early, focus on it, give it everything, give it something like passion? And like, how can you derive that passion if it's just about making some money? Well, one way I like to raise the stakes and to goal stack is to imagine every project that you're working on, imagine that you're speaking to a large audience about the project and that you're going into the details about each step you took along the way, your story. Because each project you work on, the story behind it is what's compelling. So the fact that you just completed the project isn't going to be enough. It's not going to keep people engaged. Now, what's the most important part of the story? Think about this. Anytime you've ever done a major thing, That's noteworthy. What's the first question almost everyone asks? How long did it take you? And so 
you need to envision those conversations happening on any project that you're working on because that's the most important question anyone says. Wow, you did this accomplishment? That's so cool. How long did it take you? And what answer would you have to say to know that every single person that asked you that is going to be wowed by your answer? And that's the speed at which you should be operating. Of course, it isn't just time, right? In the real estate sector, it's not just how long did it take you to do that. It's, okay, look, let's say your goal is to raise $2 million, which is a great goal, by the way. That usually isn't enough for people to feel like they need to move at a quick speed. You know, what I want to hear is, yes, we raised the $2 million, but we did it in seven days and we were oversubscribed by 1.4 million. These are the types of things that you should be eyeing on an initial project. How can I raise the stakes so that I'm actually proud of every single aspect of the project, not just that I completed it? And this is also how you goal stack, right? So the goal is, I don't want to just raise $2 million. I want to do it in seven days and I want to be oversubscribed, right? Number four, get motivating physical items near you, particularly if they're in iShot. I have launched multiple sub-businesses from my current business and you know, we have the podcast, the book, the conference, the investment company. Each time I come up with an idea for a company, the first thing that I do is go to 99designs, which is a crowdsourced logo design company, and I create the logo. That's when it's like made official. And once I have the logo, I use that as my beacon to get these things done. That just what happens to motivate me. It may not be the same for you, but that's the first thing I do as soon as I know and I've committed to create that company. Another example of this is that when I was writing Raising Capital for Real Estate, I placed all my friends' books near me as motivation. If I look to the left of my desk right now, I see Joe Fairless's book, I see Reed Goosen's book, I see Jake and Gino's book, and they're just staring at me, and they have been for months, saying, yo, man, you going to join us on this side of the desk or what? <laughs> and this kept me motivated through all of that work, especially if it's in an eye shot of where you work. It's something that you can't avoid. So think about it. Great way to spend that 10, 15 bucks to get a book to motivate you. Number five, the last one, work out. Hey, listen, I understand. If you are trying to get something done as quickly as possible, you may think that working out may need to take a back burner and nothing can be further from the truth. Taking 45 minutes to an hour to get it in physically is a huge benefit because it makes everything else in your life line up really perfectly. If you're working out, your body is more likely to have cravings for nutritional food as opposed to sweets. You're also more likely to have better sleep, have a better mood. And all of this adds up to what is probably the most important thing and why this is so important, which is working out really boosts your confidence and your courage, which allows you to attack your goals at a rapid speed, which can propel you faster than you ever thought possible. Yes, it does help you eat correctly. Yes, it does help you sleep more thoroughly. But just having the confidence, having the courage to act at a speed that other people simply don't act at is where you're going to get that, wow, I can't believe you got that done in seven days or 15 days or two months, whatever the project is. Remember, the enemy to all of this is procrastination. Procrastination is the number one deal killer. It's the number one speed reducer but it's always brought on by a lack of confidence. And there's no better way to overcome a lack of confidence than pursuing being in great athletic shape. So I'm a huge proponent of it, as you guys know. All right, those are the tips for today's Monday Minutes. So get out there, you fellow speed demons, and let's rip it up. All right, listeners, you know the routine. This show is all about learning, making wise investments, and protecting and growing your capital. So if you're interested in these topics, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Of course, if you've already enjoyed a couple of great episodes, don't be shy. Leave a review. It really helps the show's visibility. And lastly, if you're an accredited investor and you're interested in learning more about our investment opportunities, the types of deals that I personally invest in, go to asimcapital.com. That's A-S-Y-M capital.com. Thanks a lot.